cell divides, you will find it uncoiling itself back with chromatin. Cytokinesis. In cytokinesis, when a cell itself divides, you will find it in this form again. Today, we're going to spend some time, I'm going to spend some time, time introducing you to two more words that will help you understand this chapter better. After I introduce these two words, uh, the rest of the chapter will be relatively smooth sailing. This is what we've covered. I'm going to introduce you two words right now: kinetochore and microtubules. Before we go to that, I'd just like to show you a video. Okay, do you have the link, Lumos? Okay, so Lumos has a compilation of a lot of videos that I show in class. If you find it helpful, you can rewatch some of these videos. I'd like to show you a video this morning. That shows your perspective in cells that perhaps we never knew existed. Did you know that our cells also have skeleton? You think of our cells as just a block of jelly. By natural fact, they come in skeleton. And this skeleton is called a cytoskeleton because it's found in the cytoplasm. I'd like to show you what it looks like inside the cell. This is a 3D uh, virtual model of what it looks like. Cytoskeleton is a dynamic network of filamentous proteins that extends throughout the cytoplasm, forming the struts, cables, and girders that give the cell its shape, internal organization, and mechanical support for movement. There are several types of protein film, each built from subunits that rapidly come together or break apart, allowing these elaborate structures to be assembled and dismantled wherever they are required by the cell. Microtubules are stiff hollow tubes that anchor up organelles and serve as tracks that guide the movement of vesicles and other cell components. Actin are thin flexible filaments that form cross-linked bundles and branching networks. Actin is particularly important for cell movement. They are central to the tractile engine in muscle cells. 
of cell movement at the plasma membrane. Proteins are really diverse. There are some proteins, right, that behave almost like little human beings walking along. What may I guess what their function is in our cells? They are for transport. So, uh, I don't know if uh, Ms. Lim told you this, but if you recall that for things to transport around cells, they make use of vesicles. Have you ever wondered, uh, these vesicles, how can they be like, you know, bubbles? When you blow bubbles, right, they don't have an aim, right? When you blow the bubble, they just fly everywhere, right? Yet, within our cells, the vesicles can get from point A to point B. From the rough endoplasmic reticulum to go Golgi, from the Golgi to out of the cell. Why is there this sequence in which they take? Why don't they just move randomly like bubbles within a cell? That's because in reality, uh, every time there's a vesicle, one of these small little proteins will carry it like a backpack and then it will just walk along the skeleton of the cell until it reaches its next location. So imagine now, there's a rough endoplasmic reticulum, there's the Golgi apparatus here, it will take like this highway to get from point A to point B. Just for your information, but this is actually how it works. Okay? It doesn't just float randomly. But when we look under the microscope, we do not see this skeleton. Because it is so fine. And therefore, all we really see is the RER, the Golgi, and we see the vesicle magically float from one place to another. Right, so this is just for your information. Today, we're going to look at one kind of skeleton, and that skeleton is microtubules. Microtubules are made up of protein, and this protein is called tubulin. Okay, sorry, FYI. Okay? FYI. This protein is called tubulin. But the magic of microtubules is that the cell can assemble it, make it longer or shorter at its own will. For example, let's have a watch the video again. Now. Here is a microtubule that is being elongated or being shortened. For its shape, internal organization, and mechanical support. There are several types of protein film, each built in succulents that rapidly come together or break apart. Ah, so we refer to this entire straw-like hollow tube as a microtubule, right? Because it's like a tube. You see all those little components being used to assemble this microtubule? Allowing these elaborate structures to Or breaking it down, those are tubulin. Tubulin is for your information. But what's to appreciate here is that the cell can elongate microtubules and it can shorten it uh, based on its need. And for the from the size here. Wherever they are required by the make it longer, we can also make it shorter. Microtubules are stiff hollow tubes thick. But it is because of this ability to elongate and shorten that makes it a very useful skeleton to be used for cell division. And we will see in a while how microtubules is used. Okay, so today that is number one protein that I'd like to introduce you to. Right? Second, here I have my chromosome made up of two system chromatids. We say that it's linked at the centromere. Okay, at the centromere it is linked using proteins. Well, there's an additional layer of proteins that I did not introduce to you. Here I'm going to open up the flaps at the side. See these metal parts? These metal parts, uh, I'm going to use it to represent another kind of protein. And they are called chinetochore proteins. These two terms will come in very, very often from now onwards. Chinetochore proteins. If I were to draw the butterfly over here, here's a chromosome. The chinetochore proteins are at the side, where the central mirror is. What are they for? I like to think as the kinetical, I like to think of the kinetical proteins as kind of like the bait. And I like to think of the microtubules as fishing lines. And this is what the cell actually does. 
if I have an entire cell right here, I have fishermen at the side that will cast out their line, which is the microtubule, hook onto the kinetochore. And then they will play a tug of war. One side will pull, the other side will pull, and they will pull and pull and pull until, guess what happens? Okay, so you watch what happens, huh? This visualization isolates a single chromosome at mitosis. The chromosome contains two identical copies of DNA. Each DNA molecule is packaged up into one of the sausage-shaped chromatids. Sticking out from either side are microtubule fibers from the mitotic spindle used for orienting and guiding the chromosomes to their correct positions. The red region is the kinetochore, which works as the interface between the microtubules and the chromosome. The kinetochore is one of the largest and most complex molecular mechanisms inside living cells, with multiple functions to perform. The kinetochore is central to the movement of the chromosomes and is able to hang on to the dynamic ends of the microtubules. It is also a mechanical tension sensing system which is able to feel if everything is correctly attached and positioned. It is also a stop signal broadcasting system, sending out chemical signals to the rest of the cell about whether it is ready to undergo the separation of the chromosomes. Yeah, observe how at the very end, you see the microtubule extending or shortening, I'm not very sure, but you can see tubulin either being added or taken away. This kinetic core has sensed just right, and the chromosome is correctly positioned and attached. The last little bit remaining there is the stop signal broadcasting system. It is carried away by a dining motor, walking down the microtubule, away from the kinetic core. These are molecular motors involved with a directed transport along the mitotic spindle. The orange proteins walking to the left are magnesium. All this is for your information. Isn't it amazing? Inside each inside of yourself is like a city of molecular legs are carrying the stop signal broadcasting system. Okay, then now uh, this is where I, this is my favorite part. When all the kinetic the tension is just the right. transitions into the anaphase stage, with the chromatids pulled apart at the opposite poles of the cell. Ever seen this under the microscope for some of you? Yeah? We don't quite see a lot of the things. For example, uh, you cannot see the microtubules. You cannot see the fishing line. You cannot see, um, in fact, the fisherman at the side. The only thing you can see are the fat sausages. And that's what you saw. That's why you actually managed to stay. So for all of us, we saw uh, mitosis happening at different stages. Some of us were lucky enough to see it. Uh, somewhere further back. Oh, some of us were lucky enough to see it at this stage. This inner phase that's being pulled apart. Most of us saw it at this stage over here. Just a blob of blue. Right? Was that what most of us saw? A blob of blue. And that's fine. In reality, 80% of our cells are in that stage. This stage is the early stages. Interphase, prophase. It is just resting, building up. To be able to see this phase over here, which is really rare because it happens so fast. For you to be able to see it right in front of your eyes, it was just the right timing. Uh, and therefore, you were lucky. But most of us would have seen the previous two stages because that's where the cell spends most of its life in. Okay? So, so far I've introduced you two new terms. The first one being microtubules. The second being kinetochore. Yeah. With this, it is enough for us to understand the next few uh, parts of this chapter. Last but not least, I'd say that for someone to cast out a fishing line, we need a fisherman. Uh, our cells have two fishermen at both ends. We call them centrioles. 
when I when I first learned this topic, I mixed up everything that starts with a C. Centro, centromia, chromos, chromatin, chromatin. It takes a while, but you'll get there eventually. Okay? So ourselves, we will have two centrioles positioned at both sides. And the two fishermen will play like a tug of war. Pull and pull and pull until we can pull them equally apart. Okay? With this, it should be enough for us to understand mitosis by ourselves. But that's where that's we're going to go into our next activity. Okay, if you have any questions that you'd like to bring up to clarify about these parts before we move on, a bit, uh, now's a good time to do it. Or you can use the time to organize your notes, and then we'll move on to the next part. Cytokinesis. 
Remember, this is when the nucleus divides. This is when the cytoplasm, the cell divides. All right. Individually, I'd like you to try this individually now. Can you model for me what your chromosome, your chromatic, your DNA will look like at this phase over here? G1. I've given you two pachinas. Remember, each pachina represents one double helix. Up to you how many pachinas you want to use. But what would the pachina look like, the DNA double helix look like in G1? Can everyone try it out? Okay, you see if you can apply what you've learned. What will it look like in G1? You can use your stationery if you need to, as additional parts. But what would your DNA look like in G1? <laughs> Some of you have chosen to do nothing. I can okay, at this moment I cannot tell right if you are meaningfully chose to do nothing, or you are you you felt that uh, you, or you don't know what to do. Okay. Who who has decided okay, can I just make a show of hands up? Who here has decided that this is what I'm gonna give you? Fine. <laughs> sure. Okay. Can I? Okay. So maybe I would like you to explain. Why do you choose to leave it this way? My biorex. After S phase, so G2. Okay, G2. What will your DNA look like in G2 phase? Wow. Is your pen part of the structure? Okay, ready? 
Now, show your structure to your friend. Wow, everyone has almost different structures, huh? Uh, Okay, come, let's have a look at some of the French word. First one, let's have a look at this. Wow, okay, this one is uh Okay. Wow, ah, okay. Will you share with us what these pens represent? Like these stones. Okay, these stones. I cannot tell if you use a single double helix or two double helix. Two, uh, okay. Let me try to find. Oh, okay. Indeed, there are two. Okay? Fair enough? Yeah? Package to the level of chromatin level, and we have two uh, chromatin tracks attached together at the centrum here. Okay? Let's have a look at more. Let's have a look at this one. It's not like a butterfly. Yeah? Possible? Uh, we see the typical structure with two sister chromatic sides. We also see a, a certain level of packaging, right? What level of packaging this is? Uh, we don't quite see these stones, but oh, okay. <laughs> the this air, right? Supposed to be filled with these stones. Okay, nice save. Okay, good, good. Okay, let's have a look at this one. Oh, this one I really like to compare. I really look like the one in the textbook. Okay, okay. Uh, also, we see a level of compactness here. I want to see if there are any other combinations here. Okay, uh, this one looks. This one has made use of a clip to fold them in the middle. We also see some level of packaging. Now, I have a question for you: uh, If I now go into the next phase, from G two phase we go to pro phase. Can you read what pro phase is about? What happens in pro phase? Propase. Okay, propase is here. Sister chromatids condense. Okay, now, uh, in the state that you have now, what are you going to do? Okay, sister chromatids condense. What will you do next? Okay, since you say that your chromosome looks like this in G2, tell me now, when you go into propase and it starts to condense even further, what will you do next? Wow. <laughs> Perhaps I'll revisit some of your friends that we've showcased so far. Let's see how much further we can condense. After all, uh, okay, bear in mind, from G2 to the pro phase, actually we condense even further. Okay? Maybe it's my bad. I'm very poor. I should have provided you more pipe cleaners so you can make a longer DNA strand. And now you are short chain, you can only make it see a certain length. Okay, let's look at. Okay, so this just now before, remember, it was a butterfly. Now it's like what? Condensed even further. If I look very carefully, okay, I can still find the sister chromatids. Yeah? But actually, it's not bad, huh? If you realize under the microscope, you don't quite see sister chromatids. Right? Instead, all you see are fat sausages floating around. Yeah? So this is a perfect. Fat sausage. Okay. Okay, let's look at this one. Okay, do you remember that big X we saw? That is a tiny X. Okay. Yes, we come we condense it even further. Okay. Any more? Okay, let's revisit some of the ones. Okay, over here. Remember the setup originally? Now I guess. Okay, we see a greater level of condensation. Okay, so the idea take away is that. When we enter propase, we need to compact it even further. Could I get you to take photos of your models that you've made so far? The first thing in your SLS, they ask you to put in how you represent the pipe cleaners before, partial way, and after S phase. I would just like to see your model after S phase. Okay? And then I'll review it. Next lesson when I see you again, which is after Chinese New Year. Uh, we will look at some of the models as we can. Okay? So what would, does your chromosome look like after S phase? Will you snap a photo so that I have a look? So I didn't get to see everyone's model. We 
will use your photos for our recap in the next lesson.
Showcase how they'll work before we end off today. Okay, let's have a look. Right, and a place. Okay, okay, we look at this, huh? Then we look at the next one. And a place. Let's look at this one. Okay, what's the biggest difference you observe between this and this?
Today, I will see you after Chinese New Year. Okay, bye bye. Yeah, because they are still students absent. Yeah, in China and India, I think. Yeah. <laughs>